let's create these iOS chat bubbles here in Photoshop. It's a pretty easy to do. It's a lot of fun and it looks pretty cool once it's done. So this is what we're going to create. We're going to create everything that you see here and hopefully we're going to do it kind of quickly. So let's jump over to this document. You can see here I've got a blank document. I just threw a background in there. So let's get started. We're going to grab the rounded rectangle tool. It's right here located beneath the rectangle tool. Grab the rounded rectangle tool and we're going to set the corner radius right up here, radius, to 20 pixels. Now new to Photoshop CS6, we can actually punch in a width and a height for our rounded rectangle or any shape for that matter. Um, so older versions of Photoshop, you're just going to have to make sure, number one, you're set to drawing a shape layer. And after that, you're just going to have to kind of draw out a shape as close as you can to what we're getting. So I'm going to click once, and it says, hey, create new rounded rectangle. Yep, I want to do that. I want to go with a width of 150 and a height of, let's go, 25. Radius there of 20. Go ahead and hit OK. And there is our rounded rectangle. We're going to select the fill, and we're just going to choose white. So we just want white as our fill. The fill is kind of going to be irrelevant. Well, not really. We do want it to be white. What am I thinking? So now I'm going to zoom in here. And we want to create a little tail that comes off of our little rounded rectangle here. Um, so we're going to do that by grabbing the pen tool right over here. And again, set this to draw shape. And we're going to click right about where the, 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 the climax of the curve is right there. And I'm going to pull out a couple little handles. And I'm just going to... Drop a little point down here. I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key, click, and then I'm going to pull back a point right over like so. And then I'm just going to join these ends. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, I'm not going to fully explain how uh, I was doing everything that I was doing there. But essentially, run in Google a, a tutorial on the, the pen tool and then finish drawing that little shape if you've got a, a huge amount of trouble. But it's not that, that difficult. Now, also new to CS6 is we have the ability to merge these shape layers pretty much right off the bat. Before, in older versions of Photoshop, you had to sort of take the paths and, and combine the path shapes and then use vector masks if you wanted to create these vector shapes and things like that. It's much easier here in Photoshop CS6. You can actually just select both layers like this, hit Command or Control E. It's going to merge them into one shape. You can see it is two separate paths. We want this to be one path. So I'm going to grab my path selection tool here. The hotkey for that is A. I'm going to select both paths. And there's a little pathfinder icon here. Select that and choose Merge Shape Components. Boom. Just like that, we have one full shape, which is our initial chat bubble. And now that we have our shape, we need to go ahead and reduce the fill opa opacity, excuse me, and apply a drop shadow, an inner shadow, and a stroke. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with the fill opacity. You see right here, fill. We're just going to click on the word fill, and the little side-to-side -side arrow shows up. We're going to drag it back to 25%. This is why the color was important earlier when I said it wasn't important. It actually is, because black would be dark, not light. We want light. So 25% fill opacity, or thereabout. Then we're going to go layer, layer style, and we're going to start with the drop shadow. Now the drop shadow is going to be fairly straightforward. We're going to remain with the blend mode of multiply color black. Opacity is going to be reduced a little bit, 65%. Uncheck use global light. Set the angle to a straight on 90. And the distance we're going to reduce to 1. And the size we're going to reduce to 2. All right, great. So there is the drop shadow. Let's go for the inner shadow here. So we're going to select the inner shadow. We're going to choose hard light. And we're going to choose a blend mode, or excuse me, a color of white. Blend mode is hard light. Opacity is going to remain at 75. We're going to deselect use global light. And we're going to set the angle to negative 90. So it's sort of a glow coming up out of the bottom there. Very cool. Uh, distance is going to be reduced to 1. And actually, let's increase the size here, 1 pixel to 4. So it's a very subtle glow coming up out of the bottom of our little chat bubble here. Next, we need a stroke. And the stroke is even more simple. We're going to choose stroke. And the color is going to remain black. The size is going to go to 1 pixel. And we're just going to drop the opacity to 30%. So just like that. Hit OK. And you can see this is our initial chat bubble. If I zoom out to 100%, you can see the initial shape really starting to take place. Let's zoom back in a little bit. Again, grab our rounded rectangle tool. You can leave the radius at tw uh, 20 pixels. That's fine right now. And we're just going to draw out what's going to be our shine. So start right about there. I'm just going to pull it right across. And usually this shine looks best if it's between about a third and a half of the height of your shape. So I'm going to go right around a third. And I'm going to drop it. And you can see it's filled with black. Uh, I'm going to, in this case, actually the fill doesn't matter. I'm going to drag the rounded rectangle though up on top of our shape, like so. So black can be, uh, black is fine if that is our fill. We're going to go layer, layer style, and we're going to choose blending options first. We're going to reduce the fill opacity to zero because we're going to be filling this with a gradient. So I'm going to go gradient overlay, and here in the gradient selector, I'm going to choose foreground to transparent. Now here, this is a little problem. Right now, our foreground color is gray. I want this to go white to nothing. Now, I could just double click this stop and change it to white. But the problem with that is my stop over here is gray. So it's really going white to gray as it fades to nothing. So I would need to change both stops to white. 
It's actually just faster if before you even get into the layer style dialog box, just hit the letter D, which reverts your foreground and background color to defaults, and then hit the letter X, which is gonna set your foreground color to white. That way when you jump into gradient overlay and you choose foreground, foreground color to transparent, boom, you've got white to transparent, no problem, no questions asked, no additional clicking. All right, so you can see our gradient right now is running from white at the bottom to transparent at the top. I want to revert that. I want it to drop down from white to nothing. So we're going to hit the little reverse icon there, and you can see white to nothing. And we're going to go ahead and mm, maybe we'll reduce the opacity of this just a little bit. Let's take it down to 70 and see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. Hit OK. And let's just collapse these little arrows here in the layers panel. Select the background again here, and you can see our initial chat bubble. Let's go ahead and throw some text inside of this bubble now that we've got the bubble created. Select the top layer just so our text layer will appear above that and grab your text tool. The color of the text doesn't really matter quite as much. I guess you want to kind of go with a dark gray or a black, so I'll just start out with a black. Why not? We can adjust it later on if we decide we need to. And I'm going to just click in here, my text tool, and I'm going to say something like, hey, comma, how are you? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, just to fill out that extra space. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check that, and I'm going to drag this down and kind of position it here within our chat bubble, like so. That looks about right. And what I want to do now is go ahead and apply a drop shadow to this, but really it's not going to be a drop shadow so much as just a little highlight that runs along the bottom of all the letters to give it a, a little impressed effect. So we're going to go layer, layer style, drop shadow. And the drop shadow is fairly simple. We're going to go blend mode normal, set the color to white, and reduce the opacity to about 50%. Deselect use global light, set the angle to 90 degrees. 90 degrees, there we go. A distance of one and a size of zero. So there's no blurring, it's just that very, just that little kiss of light at the bottom of all of our letters. Go ahead and hit okay, we can zoom out and you can see the effect. There we go, so we've got our text appearing inside of our chat bubble, great. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this layer here in the layers panel. And what I'm going to do next is grab the rounded rectangle tool again, and we're going to place a little rounded rectangle to the left of this, which is sort of going to be the avatar, the sender, a picture of the sender of this message or text message or chat message or whatever. So I'm going to reduce my radius to 8 pixels. That's what I think will look best here. And I'm going to drag out a rounded rectangle holding my shift key, maybe like 50 by 50, something like that would probably be good, 50 pixels by 50 pixels. And I'm going to grab my move tool, hotkey for that is V. And I'm just going to kind of move them right into place about where I think he ought to be for the message. There we go. Something like that looks great. And I want to add a little drop shadow to this. But again, it's not going to be a dark drop shadow. It's going to be a light drop shadow just to add that little, just that little highlight to the base of this. So again, we're going to go layer, layer style drop shadow. And it's going to be very hard to see. We're going to drop an image into this rounded rectangle in a moment. So you're really going to see what we're about to do. But for now, with the white fill, it's going to be really hard to see. So blend mode, we're going to set that to normal. And we're going to set the color to white. We're going to leave the opacity at 75. I'm going to deselect, use global light again, and set the angle to 90. And I'm going to set my distance to 1 and my size to 0. So you can see it's just a very small white highlight at the bottom edge there. But tough to see with the white fill. Don't worry about that, though. We're going to see it very well in just a second. So we're going to hit OK here. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in an image. So I'm going to go File, Place. And this is going to place an image as a smart object. I'm going to choose this eye stock taking off face. And it's just this kind of strange photograph that somebody very obviously manipulated. Um, and we're just going to size it way down here. And to about that size, I'm going to zoom back in so we can see where I'm placing this. And I'm going to place it right over the rounded rectangle. Hit the little check icon here to commit those changes. And we want to apply a couple layer styles to this before we uh, let this go. So we're going to start with an inner shadow. So I'm going to go layer, layer style, inner shadow. Now this inner shadow is going to be fairly simple. Blend mode uh, is multiply, color is black. We're going to reduce the opacity to about 25%. Again, deselect, use global light, and then set it to 90 degrees. Distance of 1 and a size of 1. So very simple. You can see on a darker image like this, it's going to be harder to see. But don't worry because, well, you'll see it a little bit in a little uh, once we sort of mask this into that rounded rectangle. So inner shadow looks great. And next, we're going to use a gradient overlay. We're going to use the gradient overlay kind of in a unique way. What we're going to do is use it to create a shine. So again, I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to just set my foreground and background colors like we did before because I want it to go white to transparent. So I'm going to hit D and then hit the letter X. And then I'm just going to double click here on gradient overlay in my layers panel. And that's going to bring up my gradient uh, overlay dialog box here. And I'm going to choose the gradient stripe there. And I'm going to hit foreground to transparent. Now, here's the trick. 
All we need to do is grab these the opacity stops here on the top. You see we get two opacity stops on the top, color stops are on the bottom. We're going to grab the opacity stops on the top and drag them both to the 50% position. All right, so there's the one, and then here's the other one, both to 50%. And you can see it's going to make this very sharp cutoff. You can see what it's doing to our image back here. White, nothing. Very cool. Hit OK. And I'm going to tick on reverse because I want that shine to be on the top. And let's even throw this on an angle. Let's go 130 degrees. A nice little angle. Uh, angled shine like so and just reduce the opacity to about 20 percent so you can see just like that it's a shine there we go now that we've done that we're going to command or control click our rounded rectangle and we're going to mask this smart object to our shape layer so with that selection selected we can go layer layer mask reveal selection you can also just hit the little mask icon here at the base of your layers panel right there you can see it's going to mask that guy right in. Now, the reason that I'm using a layer mask instead of just clipping is because a layer mask is going to sort of mask in and contain our layer styles as well as the image. And I like that. And I want the layer styles because if we want to change the avatar, all that we need to do is right click on that layer or go layer, smart object, replace contents. And we can here, let's take this photo of me, drop it in there and it just drops me right in it keeps the layer styles it keeps everything in place so it's very cool now if you want to move the image around a little bit the mask is going to move with it which is going to move us off of our little base that's a problem obviously right well the solution is easy all you have to do is hit this little chain icon between the layer and the layer mask and then you can move the image well make sure you select the image we had the mask there selected you can then move the image around underneath the mask to sort of reposition it the way you want it to be positioned very cool. The next thing that I want to do with this little chat bubble icon is add a little highlight. Just give a little bit of definition right here on the left side of our chat bubble. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to create a new layer. Well, no, we're not going to create a new layer. Let's do this with a shape layer. Let's grab the pen tool again, set to draw a shape layer. And I'm going to start right up here. And I'm going to draw and drop a point here. And then I'm going to pull through our little corner there, but I'm pulling through on a little bit of a curve. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can really see what's happening. There's a little bit of a curve here, and then I'm going to hold down my Alt key, and I'm going to click this anchor point to chop that off and just draw and click straight back to the point we started with. So just a little bit of an angle there. We're going to mask this in in a moment. So, uh, well, we're going to mask it in right now, actually. We're going to Command or Control click the Shape Layer thumbnail right down here for Shape 1, which this is our actual chat bubble shape. That's what we want to mask this little highlight to. So Command or Control click that Layer thumbnail with the shape two layer selected up here. We're gonna hit the little uh, layer mask icon. It's gonna mask our little shape in, great. And we can just dump the fill opacity of this layer, just reduce it all the way to zero. We're gonna go layer, well, make sure our foreground color is set to white, so there we go, flip foreground and background colors. We're gonna go layer, layer style, gradient overlay. And I'm gonna choose the gradient. I'm just gonna select the foreground to transparent. And I'm going to set my angle to, I don't know, somewhere around 70 or so. I want it to be white down here, fading up to nothing. I'm going to select gradient because right now the white's all the way down here in the point. So I'm going to pull my opacity stop over to maybe 40% or so. You can see there's a little bit of the highlight showing through. Go ahead and hit OK. You could, if you feel like the highlight's too strong, reduce or set the blend mode to something like soft light. But I think that's going to make it a little bit too hard to see. So I'm going to go normal and then maybe just kick the opacity down to about 70%. Whatever you think is going to look best, feel free to just toy around with your own settings. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, uh, now that I've done that, I should say, what I'm going to do is zoom out and check it out and see what it looks like. I like it. And what we can do now is grab all of this and move it over and then duplicate it and sort of build a little bit of a conversation here. So I'm going to select all of this stuff. Now, one quick note. If you're going to move the little avatar, you have to make sure that the image is linked with the base. And you can see right now that the image is not linked with that layer mask. So it's not going to remain connected to the base. Go ahead and just link up the image with the mask so we're not dragging it away. And then select all of the stuff. Let's drag it right up to about there. That's cool. And I'm going to group this into a layer group. Commander Control G. And I'm just going to name this. I'm going to say first message. There we go. Cool. Now I'm going to duplicate this layer by just holding down my Alt or Option key and dragging this layer group down to the new layer icon. Letting go, it's going to say, hey, would you like to duplicate the group? I'm going to say, absolutely, and I'm going to name it second message. There we go. And I'm just going to pull this down a little bit and then pull it over this way just a touch. Now what I'm going to do, there's a number of things we can do here, but 
what I think I'm going to do is just go ahead and flip a couple of these shapes. So this is where it's sort of a little bit of handwork. You need to go in and just make a couple little adjustments. So let's select our shape right here, and that's our initial chat bubble shape. Hit the Commander Control T, or hit Commander Control T. Right click and just go flip horizontal. There we go, we just flip that guy right around. But you can see the problem that we're gonna have is our little highlight is still over there. So let's just flip this guy, Commander Control T, right click, flip horizontal, commit that change, and let's drag it right over, position it in place where it's supposed to be. And I'm gonna hit, grab my move tool. There we go, it's right where it should be. But you can see it looks like we're having just a little bit of an issue here with our mask, and that's fine because the mask didn't flip. If I control click the mask, I can see the selection's way out here. It's not at all what I want. I'm gonna hit Command or Control D to deselect that. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. And I'm gonna Alt click my mask. Alt clicking the mask brings up the mask as basically an alpha channel. So you can see just black and white, and the white in the mask is what's showing. Now this is not at all what I want. So all I can do here is set my foreground color to black. I just hit the letter X there to flip it back and hit Alt Backspace or Option Return on the Mac. Just fill the entire mask with black and be done with it. Alt click the mask again and get out of it. Well, now the highlight's just completely gone. That's fine, don't worry about that. We can Command or Control click our shape. Now it's a flipped shape. Select that layer mask and fill that with white. So I can just go Edit, Fill, and choose to use white. Hit OK. And let's position Photoshop back in the frame correctly. There we go. And you can see we've got our little highlight back. You can see there it is kicking right in. And now this is our shine. Matter of fact, I'm going to rename that layer shine just so we know what we're dealing with there. I'm going to grab my move tool. Oh, Commander Control D to deselect, by the way. And I'm just going to shift my shine over a little bit. Now, something that may need to be adjusted is the angle of the gradient in our little highlight now that I'm looking at it. So I'm just going to select that layer and I'm going to go layer, layer style gradient overlay. And here it is. And sure enough, we just need to rock the angle over to about there, about 120. Should be good. And hit OK. So there we go. We've got our flipped uh, chat bubble here. And we just need to move the avatar over to the other side. Just like that. So there we go. We sort of have our corresponding discussions now going back and forth. I'm going to adjust my text here. Although the text can be adjusted pretty much based on however, whatever the amount of text you put into a chat bubble is. And that brings up another issue. What happens if we have a, a large paragraph of text or something that we want to put into these chat bubbles? How do we edit the chat bubbles to make them bigger or smaller? Because it's a rounded rectangle, and rounded rectangles are always kind of a pain in the neck to sort of size up and down because you lose that perfect rounded corner radius. Well, there's still not exactly an easy way to do this, but we can go in and with a couple little clicks of the pen tool, and it's very simple clicks with a pen tool, even if you don't know how to use the pen tool, simple clicks with a pen tool. Uh, we can really readjust and resize this chat bubble fairly easily. And once you sort of have it set up to be adjusted, it's, it's a piece of cake. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to, well, first and foremost, before we get involved with the chat bubble, let's swap out this image. Now, part of the problem is going to be if I just swap the image out straight up, like right now. Um, so I select the avatar layer, which is right up here. Hold on. I can drag out my layers panel so you can really see what's going on. If I just swap out my avatar right here, by going layer, smart objects, replace contents with let's say the taking off face image, you can see it changes both. I don't want that. Now, the reason that's happening is because this smart object here is simply an instance of this smart object here. So we need to duplicate it. Now we only need to do this once because obviously all of the messages on this side are going to be from you and all the messages on this side are going to be from your buddy or whoever it is you're texting or chatting with. So we don't need to worry about doing this more than once, but we do need to sort of break this smart object from its, its parent smart object or just its duplicated smart object. It's not really a parent smart object, just the other smart object. So we're going to do this by going layer, smart objects, new smart object via copy. Now it's going to duplicate the smart object, save the copy layer. You can see iStock taking off face copy. That's the one we want to keep. The other one, that can go to the garbage, that's junk. So now if I work on this, I can go layer, smart object, replace contents, go ahead and choose iStock taking off face, and there we go. We've only, uh, we've only edited the new smart object. So our other smart object stays intact. And the beauty of this is now when I want to add a message to this side, I just duplicate the second message folder. When I want to add a message over to this side, I just duplicate the first message folder. And if I want to change the avatar, if I've got 20 messages on this side, I change the avatar once and all of those avatars are going to change. So it's just a little sort of sub lesson on, on 
how smart objects can be useful uh, when you're working with stuff like this. But let's get back to what we were working on. Let's expand this chat bubble. However, before I do that, I'm going to drop in the new text so we can see how far we need to expand this chat bubble. So I'm going to delete this text layer. I'm just going to hit the garbage can. Yep, I want to get rid of it. And I'm going to bring up, I've got some quotes here. I'm just going to bring up this couple Mitch Hedberg lines or quotes or jokes or however you want to put that. So I'm going to grab the text tool and we want to set the color to black. So we're working with uh, a darker color. And I'm going to draw out sort of the rectangle that I want my text to go into and Command or Control V to go ahead and paste that. I'm going to commit those changes. I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm going to move that down. All right, so here we go. We've got our first uh, quote here and that looks great. Now, now that we sort of see our text, we need to apply that drop shadow to it and we can do this either by going in and just applying the drop shadow. I think it was something like uh, layer, layer style drop shadow and it would have been normal. Set the color to white and set the opacity to something like 40, I think. Use a global light, angle of 90, distance of 1, and a size of 0. Something like so. Hit OK. And there we go. We've got that. We can also just copy the layer style here in the layers panel. But because my screen is kind of compressed and smaller, it's probably faster just to do it the way that I just did it. Now we're going to expand that rounded rectangle. So we're going to grab our direct selection tool. So it's underneath the path selection tool. The hotkey is A, direct selection tool. And I'm going to drag out. Oops, oh, telling me the layer doesn't contain vector shapes. That's because I'm on the text layer. We want to go down to our shape layer. That's the bubble layer right there. All right, we're going to grab this entire half of our rounded rectangle. We're going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to tap the left arrow key once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight times. And now that I've done that, I can grab the shine layer here and the shine's got to be moved over eight times as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there we go. We've got our proper width. Now for the height, this is where things get tricky because when the, the uh, rounded rectangle tool draws a rounded rectangle, well, let's go to the shape layer, it only places one anchor point here horizontally, one, two. And we really need two anchor points. Well, we can use the pen tool and drop in a second anchor point and not really mess up our tangent handles. It's really cool. So you just want to grab the pen tool. You can just use the regular pen tool. You don't need to worry about any of these other tools. And just move right up beneath the anchor point until you see the pen has a little plus next to it. Now, if you go too high and too close to the anchor point, it's going to have a minus. You don't want that. That's going to get rid of that anchor point. So use the plus, drop an anchor point in over there, and then I'm going to drop an anchor point in on this side as well. As close to that anchor point as I can get it, cool. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to my direct selection tool, and I'm going to drag out a selection over the bottom half of my rounded rectangle here. And just make sure that I've selected, let me zoom in as close as I can, I've selected this anchor handle on the bottom, but I've left this one right here. So our rounded rectangle is not going to get completely messed up. So let me zoom out just a little bit and once more. And now I'm just going to, I'm going to do that again. Oh, select a little bit too much. Just make sure you've selected all but the top four little anchor points there. And once you, if you're following along, you probably will be able to see what I'm doing. And then you can just start clicking down and I'm holding my shift key and just clicking the down arrow key. So what is that? One, two, three, four, and four. That's big enough to contain my little message. And the only thing that we have to do now is grab our little highlight and nudge that down four as well. So grab the move tool and just nudge down. One, two, three, four. Drops that right back in place. And there we go. We've created our little messages. So it's a little bit of work to get it flipped over. But once you have it flipped over and once you have it set to expand like that, you're good to go. And it's really easy. So we can just duplicate second message here by grabbing that layer group, drag it down, drop it on a new layer icon, drag this down a little bit lower, and we can completely alter the message. Oh, you know what actually we should do? Uh, let's go in here and drop a, a color blue over this. Um, because you know when you send text messages, they're usually either green or they're blue in, through an iPhone at least. So I'm going to grab uh, the color here, a color. It's going to be a blue. And I'm going to go to the shape. So I'm in my second message here, right there, that shape that's highlighted. And I'm going to go layer, layer style, color overlay. And you can see there we are on red. Red's a little bit too much. Matter of fact, let's knock the opacity down to about 20% right off the bat, just because we want to make sure we're not covering anything up at all. And then we're going to choose color. And I'm going to go with a very light blue, 008AFF. That's the blue I want. Hit OK and hit OK again. You can see it looks pretty good. I like it. Now what I can do is, well, yeah, I'll just go layer, layer style, copy layer style, and we can go up here to our second message up here, select that shape, and again, layer, layer style, paste layer style. 
and there we go. We've got that duplicated. So now that we've done all of that, we've sort of built our little chat interface, and you can add as many of these as you want. And actually, let me give you a little example. Let's say you did want to change this avatar. Remember, these are both sort of the same smart object, if you will. So we can select that layer, and we can go Layer, Smart Object, Replace Contents, and I can replace it with this other image. You're going to see it's going to replace both of them. Very cool. I'm going to undo that, though, because I want to be able to tell who's sending and who's receiving. So let's go up here to the top, and we're just going to drop in a little bit of text like you would normally have, um, you know, on on your on your iPhone or, or your mobile device. So I'm going to grab the type tool, and I'm going to type out the word text message, just like that. And I'm going to use a font face of Arial. There we go, cool. And a size of 10 or 12. I'll actually probably stick with 12 here for this example, just so we can really see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go with a very light gray. Maybe I'll actually sample off of the background and make it just a little bit darker than that and a little bit darker there we go something like that so a adb 7 c1 is what I'm using go ahead and do ok and I'm gonna duplicate this layer so I'm gonna just alt drag the layer you could use command or control J any number of hotkeys drag this straight down and this is gonna be the timestamp so I'm gonna say May 7th comma 2012 and then I'm gonna put the time 12 21 p.m. There we go. Now what I want to do is select both of these text layers. So I'm holding down my command or control key. Just control click that other layer in your layers panel. Open up the character panel. Uh, and actually we want the paragraph panel. So that's, that is here under window paragraph. And I just want to align these to the center. There we go. Align center. Now that they're aligned center, I'm going to zoom out to 100% here. And I want to make sure that they're aligned to the center of the document. So I'm going to hit command or control A to select all. I've got my move tool selected. I still have both layers selected in my layers panel. And I'm going to choose here align vertical centers or align horizontal centers. I'm sorry. There we go. So we've aligned that to the perfect center there. And now what we need to do is go ahead and just drop a very subtle uh, drop shadow underneath this. And again, this is another one of these drop shadows that's more of a just a lower highlight. So layer style, drop shadow. Just give a little touch of light along the bottom. And go blend mode is normal, color is white. Opacity, reduce that to 40%, uncheck, and use global light, set the angle to 90, and the distance to 1, and a size of 0. So just a very subtle bit of light along there. Go ahead and hit OK. And I can just use my Alter Option key and click and drag that little FX icon over to my May 7th uh, layer. And I'm actually going to select the May 7th layer. Let's try making this text a bold. That might make it look a little bit more realistic. There we go, bold. Yes, that looks better already. And the last thing I think I want to do is just throw a little sort of letter pressed line effect up there. So create a new layer, Command Shift Alt or Control, excuse me, Command Shift Option or Control Shift Alt N creates a new layer with no frills. And I'm just going to say line, I'll name it line. And I'm going to grab the single row marquee tool. It's going to create one single pixel. It selects one pixel across your entire document. And I'm going to fill this with. Mm, I'm going to go black, alt backspace, or option return, but I'm going to immediately lighten it up. So I'm going to hit command or control U. This brings up my hue saturation dialog, and I'm going to pump in some brightness until it looks about right to me. Something like there, maybe 75% brightness from a solid black line. Hit OK. And we're going to go layer, layer style drop shadow, and we're going to apply virtually that same drop shadow that we've been all, uh, all day here. Blend mode normal, color of white. I'm actually going to set the opacity to 100% in this case. I'm going to play with the opacity in a second. Uncheck use global light, set the angle to 90, distance of 1, and a size of 0. And yeah, 100% is just a little bit too much. Let's knock it down to about 65. That looks good. Hit OK. And then we're just going to reduce the opacity of this layer as a whole. So reduce the opacity down to about, I don't know, 35 or 40. That looks great. And I'm going to mask this into the width of our texting area. So grab the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to pull a selection out that goes just beyond both of the avatars, like so. Got the line layer selected. I'm going to go layer, layer mask, reveal selection. So hide everything else except what's inside of the selection I just created. You can see it's cutting off our line right up there. It's great. Exactly what, exactly what we need. And now we need to just get rid of the line that runs over the word text message as well. So grab the rectangular marquee tool again and drag out a selection over that. Make sure you've got the mask selected. And we're going to go edit, fill, and we're going to fill this with black. And you can see it just makes that go away as well. So there we have it. We've created these iOS styled text message or chat message bubbles in Photoshop. 
I've done it in, well, it took a little bit of time, I guess. But you can see it's very cool. You get your, all your little highlights and shadows and lines going on. And you also have an avatar that can be dropped in place as well. So go ahead. I hope you had fun with this one. I hope you learned it. Take this, run with it, use it in web designs. Um, one of the things that I'm looking at here that maybe we want to adjust is just grab these and we'll go one, two, three, four. We're going to knock them down just so they line up with the chat bubble like it was before. I must have missed that earlier. Four, there we go. And that's it. That completes the effect. And you now have finished iOS style chat bubbles for your use. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for sticking around and watching. Make sure you go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com for more great free video tutorials. Thanks for watching.